How much money has been flowing into your TECL? That is the three times levered tech bull ETF up 83% this year. Are people still putting money into this? People are still putting money in it. So, so there's big bets couple, on technology. A couple hundred million coming into technology. So that ETF year to date, it's a short term product, but nevertheless, somewhat low volatile trending markets again. So forget December, it seems like first quarter was up. It's up 83%. And why? You know, Apple up 20%, Google up 20%, Microsoft up 20%, growth in services, growth, growth in AI, growth in cloud. So first quarter, tech remains strong. So growth is back. Wow. Chris, I know that you are a little more cautious on the semiconductor subspace of tech. Does that mean you are cautious on all of technology? We're not cautious on all technology. I, I think software is really a good place to be, and we really uh, think there's a lot of momentum behind technology in general. Our feeling is just the markets run a lot from the December bottoms. Uh, it's time to become a little bit more cautious. Uh, we're back to almost all-time highs. Valuations are around, let's say, 16.8 times earnings for the S&P 500. So we're getting back back above our you know recent averages of, of let's call it uh, you know 16 plus. So at this point in time, I think it just makes sense to just be a little bit more cautious in general. Look at some of those sectors that have underperformed, like healthcare, like the financials, and, and be more of a, a value investor at this point in time. So what's interesting about this discussion about the financials technology, we often talk about this idea that they are the ones that are supposed to lead the next leg higher in bull markets. If you take a look at financials overall so far year to date, it hasn't been the banks that have been driving the financial performance. So that sector in the S&P 500 is being driven a lot by non-bank financial institutions. Like Ameriprise, asset Leg yes, Mason, the asset management MSCI, companies. The, the guys who measure indices providers, that sort of thing. So, so what's curious about the leadership now is we focus so much on the banks. We focus so much on the yield curve, but it's not necessarily those banks that are the ones that are helping to prop up the financial well, so far. Well, that's why it's hard, Sylvia. I hate to use the terms tech and finance, they're so big, right? They're so mm -hmm. broad, there's so many sub-markets. Where are you seeing interest for direction clients outside of technology or even deep inside of technology? Yeah, so it's a great point, and particularly because tech has moved around, so the OG Fang is not really tech anymore. So, you know, Facebook and Netflix are actually in communications right now, and that's a sector that's done quite well. Amazon, Nike, Starbucks, consumer discretionary. Unemployment is at its lowest. Consumer spending is, is healthy and strong and high, and we've seen flows going into there. Um, and probably, the, you know, the next tech, people often ask us, like, what could be the next tech if Apple at the top and Microsoft's at the top and Google's, you know, sort of topped out. Well, we love AI. You know, if you look at, we have an ETF called Ubot. It's basically robotics and artificial intelligence. It's sensors and robots in Japanese factories to help them grow their GDP as they struggle with an aging population. It's intuitive surgical, Da Vinci robots. That ETF is up mm -hmm. year to date 105%. And, and, you know, every day we open the paper, big banks investing in AI, big banks investing in robot, becoming more fintech. To your point, fi the financials that are moving the market are changing. Yeah. You know, Chris, Sylvia said OG, right? I got another OG <laughs> for you. Original Greenspan. Do you remember irrational exuberance? I mean, he said that the market shuttered. It did rise for years after that. Do you believe with 83% gains on this triple levered bullish ETF that Sylvia talked about, we're getting a little extreme in our exuberance. <laughs> well, there's definitely a lot of pockets of exuberance throughout the market. You could point in that area as, as one area as being exuberant. I think if you look at certain other sectors within the, within the market, subsectors and things like that, again, we think semiconductors have run quite a bit. We think home builders have run quite a bit. Those are areas where, again, we'd be a little bit more cautious. We believe in the long-term trends. It's just in the short run, as the market has run up as much as it has, there's got to be pullbacks along the way. We think sentiment is starting to get a little bit overdone on the positive side. If you look at the RSI for the, for the S&P 500, it's around 68. So we're not quite at overbought levels of 70, but we're getting closer. So in general, yeah, I think there's pockets of the market that seem a little bit expensive and, and potentially overbought, and they could be ripe for a pullback. On the other hand, there's parts of the market that have been really left behind. You look at pharmaceuticals within healthcare, they're trading around 14.6 times earnings. There's still, there's still revenue and earnings growth there. They've been left behind during this rally. If the market does continue to move higher over the next year or two, as we believe it will, then you want to be in some of those parts of the market that have lagged so far because they will catch up eventually. Quick Sylvia, comment, Dom. Really quickly, Sylvia, I'm just curious about consumer staples. Massive mm -hmm. run up higher. Everyone seems to love them. There's got to be downside risk there. 
Yeah, well, I think with consumer staples, it's sort of like what is the long-term trend of the market? You have persistent demand and consistent income in staples. And right now, again, a lot of the things that I look at are short-term. I think in the short term that we see the growth and the cyclicals booming. And I think that when the market starts to pull back, we will see shifts going back into healthcare and back into consumer staples in the late yeah. cycle performers. But, you know, for now, I think it's less exciting than some of the, the growthier names. Oh,